Number 27. A ball is thrown horizontally from the top of a 6 meter building and lands 100 meters from the base of the building. Ignore air resistance. Letter A. How long is the ball in the air? All right, so we have a little picture describing what's going on. We have a ball here being thrown horizontally. Uh, it's originating at a height of 60 meters above the ground and it will travel horizontally as it says 100 meters. So the first part is to find out the time. So why don't we list what we know in each uh, direction and see if we can figure out uh, time, okay? So here's the X components. So what do we know about X? Well, the only X component we really know is the distance, right? Or the displacement. So that's gonna equal the 100 meters. I don't know the initial velocity in that X direction, right? They didn't tell that to me. And I also don't know the time. Now remember time is, you know, uh, dimension less. So it doesn't know whether it's in the X or Y frame. Okay, so if you were to be able to find time in the X frame, that'd be the same as the time in the Y frame or vice versa. If you find time in the Y frame, it'd be the same as in the X frame as well. So it looks like all the X's, I can't, there's no way I can solve for time. So why don't we list the Y's and maybe we can, you know, find a way to figure time out from there. So here's all the Y values, right? So we're, uh, the, our, our Y value uh, in terms of its displacement, I'll call it Y, right, is actually going to be negative 60 meters, right? Start high and low, it has to be negative. Okay, because the final value here, or at the bottom, is going to be less than the initial value. And remember, it's always final minus initial. All right, so it's negative 60. Um, what else do we know? We also know that the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. Okay, there is no y component. Let me just change the color here. There is no y component to this vector at all. So therefore, the initial will be zero. Um, there will be some, right, y component... Um, of the final velocity, I don't know what that is at the moment. Um, we also know that there is an acceleration, right, in the y direction, because remember gravity, gravity's acceleration acts in the y direction, so that's negative 9.80 meters per second squared. And um, what else is there? Mm, do we, and again, time, right? We don't know what the time is. And I'll also put going back to the x component, right? I didn't put the acceleration because there is none, but I'll just uh, state it explicitly. So zero meters per second squared. Okay. So now given knowing what I have, now I'm able to kind of identify what formula I should probably use, right? And able to, uh, to help me out and calculate, right? It looks like I'm going to be using equation number two here at the top, right? So, but just in terms of Y components, all right, I can solve the time here because I'm trying to relate an equation between time, acceleration, initial velocity, and Y. And that brings me to this equation up here on the right. So why don't we write that down, all right? So we have change in x, or I'll, sorry, change in y, is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by time plus one half the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. So here we have a negative 60, right? This whole initial velocity was zero, so that thing is zero, plus one half times negative nine, excuse me, times negative 9.80 multiplied by then time squared. So let's just clean it up a little bit. So it's negative 60 is equal to now a negative 4.90 t squared. Simply now divide out the negative 4 point, oops, negative 4.90 from both sides. And here we have now 60, 60 divided by 4.9, and we get 12.2. So here we have now 12, 12.2, and that equals t squared. Simply take the square root to get rid of the square now. So square root of 12.2. And we get 3.49, right? So we get a value of three, 3.49 seconds, right, is equal to t. All right, so that is the time that the uh, ball is in the air. So that takes care of letter A. All right, let's move on now to letter B. All right, so we have, it says what must what must have been the initial horizontal component of the velocity? All right, so we're looking for the initial horizontal component. So now, right, let's go back to our, our knowns here, right, and unknowns for the x uh, components. We do know the time now, right? So I'm going to now erase this, okay? And I'm going to place in the value of three, and I'll put it in a different color just so 
you, um, you guys remember that we didn't know it at the start, all right? But now we do know it. So now, considering what I know in my X component um, little you know table here, whatnot, I can actually solve for the initial velocity in the X. Why? Because I'm looking at what I'm given and I'm trying to think to myself, well, do I know an equation that relates displacement, velocity, and time with the acceleration being zero? And we do, right? We have an equation. Um, we, you could use one of these. You could use this one at the top. That actually, number two, that actually will simplify. Yeah, why don't we use that? I was thinking of another equation, but why don't we use that? That'll simplify down to the equation I was thinking of anyway. So let's put letter B over here. I'm going to write that equation. So change in X, right? The change in the displacement is equal to the initial velocity in the X direction multiplied by time plus one half acceleration times time squared. So let's plug in some of the values here in our uh, for our um, X component. So we have 100 is equal to initial velocity multiplied now by 3.49 plus then, but right, remember this acceleration here is, is zero. So that whole thing just goes to zero, right? So this is just plus zero. So I don't even, I'm not even going to put that in, right? It doesn't really change the math at all. So now I'm going to, in order to solve for the initial velocity here in the X direction, I'm going to divide out the 3.49 from both sides. 3.49. Great. And notice here we get now an initial velocity in the x direction of 100 divided by 3.49. So it becomes 28.7. So we get 28.7 meters per second. That is the initial velocity in the x direction. All right, so that's fairly straightforward. B was nice and easy. Let's take a look at uh, letter C. So what is the vertical component of the velocity just before the ball hits the ground? So remember, if I'm thinking about how I'm, you know, framing this problem now, right? And framing, I mean, what's my initial set of conditions and what are my final set of conditions? I'm talking about this point being the initial, right? And then this location, once it hits the ground, being the final. All right. So if I'm considering then what's the vertical, pure vertical component, I'm thinking about what is the initial Y values, okay? And then what are the final Y values? So again, that brings me over to here in terms of what I wrote down already, my givens and knowns and unknowns, right? So um, in terms of this now, remember, we do know the time here, right? So I'm going to erase the question mark and I'm going to plug in the number, right, of 3.49. Now I need to solve for the final velocity in the y direction, right? So which equation would you uh, like to choose? Now you have a choice here. You can either use equation number two Right, because we do know the time, or we could use equation um, number uh, four. Right, I would actually prefer to use here. I would prefer to use uh, equation number four. Reason being is because if I made an uh, if I made a mistake in my time value, right, it doesn't propagate through all of the questions. Right, I would have messed up letter B, but then C should have. Uh, if I do this method, then C should actually wind up being correct. But if I don't, then yeah then everything will be wrong. And that would be a problem, especially if you're on, on, on uh, the test. So just keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna choose equation uh, number four here. So let's write that down. So this is letter, uh, let me put it in black. So this is letter C now, okay? And I we're gonna do the final velocity in the y direction squared is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by that displacement in the y. So I'm looking for the final velocity, okay? The initial was zero, so that just thing, that whole thing goes to zero. Two times the acceleration now was negative 9.80 in the y direction, and my displacement was negative 60. So notice here how the value on the right-hand side now, when I take two multiplied by negative 9.8 times negative 60, notice how it works out to be positive, all right? Which it should, um, because you'll see why in a second. So this is... 1180 considering significant fig uh, considering uh, sorry significant figures so notice now when I take the square root of both sides which I have to do to find just the final velocity I can take the square root of a positive value right if I didn't make this value right here negative then this whole term would have been negative and then you can't take the square root all right the magnitude is right but just the signs are going to be off so here we have the final velocity in the y direction being equal to the square root of 1180. So we get 34 point, what do we get here? 
four considering the rounding. So 34, whoops, 34.4 meters per second. That is the final velocity in the y direction. All right, so that takes care of letter C. Let's now finish this out with letter D. So what is the velocity, including both the horizontal and vertical components of the ball just before it hits the ground? All right, so now um, what we need to do, I'm just thinking what, I'll, what, what I'm actually gonna do is just add something to my X component table. All right, it's something that I do know that I just didn't place in before. So first thing is, let me just erase this initial uh, X component here because we know it now, right? We just calculated it over here. So that's 28.7 meters per second. And I'm looking for the final now, okay? The final, oops, the final velocity in the X direction. Now remember that since my acceleration here is zero, what does that mean in terms of velocity? It means it's constant, right? So whatever it was initially, it is going to be finally, right? So we don't even need to do any calculations here whatsoever. All right, so this will be 28.7 meters per second. So now knowing that, all right, what I now can do is now I can find the resultant, that's essentially what they're asking me for letter D, find the resultant velocity because we have to include both horizontal and vertical components, both X and Y components, right? So let me just erase one more thing just so we have a nice complete table here. All right, and I'm gonna plug in the value of 34.4, 34.4 uh, meters per second. So uh, now when we look at this, right, we are focusing in on using the final velocity in the X and the final velocity in the Y direction to find the resultant. All right, so follow me up here on the upper left-hand corner. Uh, I'll do this in um, red. So here's letter D. Oops, here's letter D. I'm gonna draw a, just a quick set of um, axes just so we can see this. Uh, sorry, let me do like that. And uh, what do we got here? So the X component said was 28.7, right? So let me draw that here on my picture. So this X component vector right here is 28.7, okay? And now the Y component, all right? One thing is in terms of the sign here, right? So just think about how the problem is working. Um, notice how, right, the, the Y component of the velocity here has to be negative, okay? So remember one thing, anytime, let's just go back to here. Anytime you take the square root of a number, you always get a positive and negative result. All right, so technically this answer should have been positive and negative. Okay, right here. Um, then you'll say, well, which one am I gonna choose? Well, we have to choose the one actually that makes physical sense in this problem. All right, so there's gonna be no way to, you know, mathematically deduce that here. You have to think about, well, what direction is it traveling in? And it is traveling in the negative Y direction. So therefore that value should here uh, be negative, All right? And I'll also make a note here that has to be negative too. Now that um, will tell you what direction you need to draw your Y uh, vector in when you're looking at drawing it in this particular coordinate system. Right, so now we have to draw a Y value straight down. I cut off the seven there, but I think you can still make that out. So this is gonna be 34.4, okay? And what's the resultant look like? Remember the resultant is just from the start all the way to the end. Okay, so it's this nice little uh, line right here. Now remember, this forms a nice right triangle, okay? So therefore, uh, we can solve. Now you can use Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right, and find this, this is the c. Uh, there's also a reworked uh, equation. So here, we'll do this. The resultant vector is equal to the square root of the sum of all of the x's squared plus the sum of all of the y's squared. All right, this is literally just Pythagorean's theorem, just reworked a little bit, all right? You'll see this formula coming up in later problems. So now just plug in the values, plug in your X and plug in your Y, and we just go about and calculate. So here we have square root of 28.7 squared, oops, plus negative now 34.4, but you'll notice since it's squared, it won't really make a difference. All right, and then just throw it into the calculator and solve. So we've got square root of 28.7 squared plus negative 34.4 squared. 
Whoops. Oh, be careful your parentheses there, guys. So 28.7, sorry, squared plus 34.4, and that's negative squared. So we get 44.8. All right, so this the result in here is 44, 44.8, and that is in meters per second. Okay, this is the overall velocity, including both X and Y components. All right, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe and look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.